Well, uh, as the audience knows, I'm Connor and I'm Brittany. And we're here with our dear, dear friend Toomey. <laughs> Thanks for being here. And as we, we were just chatting a little bit before we got on uh, the actual recording and just kind of saying that <clears throat> our intention is to create a space and to have a conversation. And for as far as like Brittany and I's side goes, we kind of intentionally didn't plan anything because we mostly just really want to connect with you and, and also offer that kind of, that kind of connection to our audience. And mostly I think the only thing that feels on top for me is just to ask how you're doing. Mm -hmm. So first I just want to say thank you again um, for having this conversation with me, for reaching out. Um, I think one of the things that I have been feeling is a strong desire to um, take care of my mental health and um, self-care in the midst of the turmoil and um, all that has been unfolding. Um, I should say, I think, I, think it's, I think it's important for me to say that I'm not currently living in the United States. I live with my sweetheart and um, our little one um, in the Canary Islands. Um, but I grew up mostly in the United States, outside of Nigeria, West Africa, and Nigeria, and then and then the States, and my my all my family in terms of my um, <clears throat> nuclear family are in the States. I have so many dear friends, loved ones like you in the States, um, and so my heart feels also this sense of um, heartbreak because I'm also not there. And that can seem strange, but I feel like there is this brokenness and there's this wound that's like opening up and I'm not there. And so there's like, I think that also layer of feeling both a sense of relief as well as a sense of just yeah, heartbreak, heartbreak. Mm -hmm. I will also share that <clears throat> initially when people started reaching out to me about um, right after George Floyd's murder, basically, and we're reaching out and then, you know, the unfolding of responses mm -hmm. and asking for my response, I had this well of anger come up. Um, a lot of the people who are asking me in terms of, uh, and this is not people who are just saying, how are you doing? They were saying, what do you think? You know, can you, can you make a response around this? I had this anger come up that was already, I was already feeling rage, which I would love to talk to you about that emotion a, a little bit. But this anger of like, I don't owe you anything. Oh. I don't owe you a response. I don't owe you um, a, a, a byline or a blurb or a post about what I think about this. I owe you nothing. And that was really interesting to observe that that anger come up and um, to kind of investigate where that was from. And I feel like uh, as a black woman, I feel like there's been many times in my life where I have felt like I was supposed to be some sort of spokesperson mm -hmm. for um, my community or my race or my gender and, um, and um, feeling a feeling anger about that, feeling like do your own homework, you know, um, find other people, get their voices, you know, don't wait with bated breath for me, um, which can seem kind of, un you know, ungrateful, but even that annoys me. Like I, I don't, again, don't owe it to anybody to do that. So feeling all these feelings um, and then getting to a place through my dance, through writing, through the self-care, where I organically came to, yeah, I'm ready to speak and speak in the language that feels the most authentic for me. Yes. 
So all those feels gone, going through all, and I, I say that I want to start with that because I don't know um, if anyone who's seeing this, whatever the color of your skin, whatever, because we are all other in some ways, mm. you know, to just, um, I really believe first self care because at the heart of it, I believe part of the healing of this deep wound that America and the world is going through, um, I think self-care is a big part of it. And it's not selfish. And it's not, um, because I think until, uh, 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 until there is such a deep self-love and the, a deep um, cherishing of, of oneself, one's being, one's soul, um, it's gonna be very hard to abolish brutality mm -hmm. and abolish inhumanity. And I do believe that that can happen. I absolutely believe with my heart that this can be wiped off the face of the earth. I do, I still do, I still do. But I think that it is, is going to need like such kindness mm -hmm. and that begins with self. Yes. Yes, I love that message so much. Yeah, it feels so healing just to hear you say all this. I, I've just felt so many chills and so much resonance throughout my being as you've been speaking. And there's something so powerful about like someone, I admire your self-care so much to me. That's something I've always looked up to you, look to you for and felt so inspired by and it's it's so it feels so deep to see in a in a situation or in events that can be so triggering to see that remains your place of truth inside and that you're i just keep getting this feeling like how deep is your love like how deep is our love in times of turmoil and i know that what's being highlighted is like in certain areas is like so much upheaval and also i feel like that gives the opportunity to dig even deeper within ourselves and just you sharing that message like first love in here feels so good and that's yeah, it's just feeling so good to feel that from you right now and to hear it and to hear you speak and to feel this like, I believe too, that there is so much more that's coming and that it does begin with kindness. Uh, so just what you shared is just feel, just this first thing you shared has felt so impactful for me. So thank you for that. Thank you for, for hearing it. And as you were sharing that, Brittany, I also felt feel like it's so hard because again, they're all these fields together, right? Um, I want to, I would love to share a little bit of about my thoughts around kindness and also anger and rage because I feel like I don't want to also kind of brush that aside too quickly because I actually think that that has been part of the wound here is that you know what happened to George Floyd. What has been ha has been happening, um, and there is such brutality. And yet, I also feel like there's been this whole thing of like we'll respond to this. They'll be protesting, um, and that all that is amazing. And then it's like we just move on. People just move on. And I think this is forgetting. And I feel like part of that is um, not a true facing of the shadow emotions. They can be all this like, let's love, let's be kind. All of that is true. And also coexisting with that is anger and rage. I'll share with you what I feel and what I believe. I believe that rage and anger are such important. Rage, anger, I feel like those are maybe... Um, different shades of the same color, but it's a feeling. And I believe rage is not violence. I feel like those are two separate things. I feel like violence is an act. I feel like rage and, and fe rage, fear, jealousy, uh, 
anger, all these things are emotions. And I think they're very important emotions because they can share with us what needs to change. Um, a poem kind of exploded, fell out of me during this time. And there's a line in it that talks about a puja like rage and a puja as, as comes from India. And it's this idea of a, um, a sacred fire, a burning of something to cleanse it. Mm -hmm. And in the poem, I talk about the brutality as a wound, a wound that we really need to go into and dig deep. You know, as a, as a physician, as a doctor, we, I, I talk all the time holistic wise about getting to the underlying cause, looking at the root, not just putting like a band-aid on things. And I think for a long time, in many times, we kind of put band-aids on things that are very hard to look at. Mm -hmm. I think the smell that have a stench of history that is rife with injustice and just hard things. But I truly believe that part of the healing kindness is, is the path at the same time to also practice kindness. One has to get really authentic. And part of that authenticity, I believe, is looking at that emotion, is sitting with rage mm -hmm. and saying, teach me. What are you here to teach me? What do we need to do here? What needs to be healed here? Yeah. We can't brush over it, I believe. Yes. Definitely. Yeah. And, I, and, I, and I'm really curious about your thoughts on like the, what, what, you're, what you spoke to in the, in the beginning of that is like these big issues can come up and then it's like all of a sudden it seems like everyone's on board and it's like, come on, let's do this thing. And then it kind of fades away. And so like, what is, you know, the process for us emotionally to stay connected with what has initially come up as this fire. And then in a week or two, it's like, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think we made a difference or whatever. You know, how, how does one or how does a society kind of keep that connection going and the desire for that positive change for the ultimate goal that is peace? And perhaps that is paying attention to the rage and having a real dialogue on that. Can you speak to that a little bit? I love that, Connor. I think what's coming up for me to share around that is... Um, I also want to say that in the moment, the acute phase, in the days, in the weeks after such brutality, for such a rising up to happen, for such a, a response is amazing. Mm -hmm. And how do we persist? How do we keep that dialogue going? I actually believe what came up, was coming up for me to share around that is I believe there has to be an understanding of our interconnectedness and our oneness. Because I say that because I think what you can end up doing is you can siphon these things into different boxes. You can say, okay, that issue was around um, uh, black men being, being shot and killed and or need to death, you know, like killed, brutally murdered, slaughtered, um, police brutality, that's that one issue. And then maybe two weeks down the line, you might read a byline of a woman being stoned somewhere in the world. And you'd be like, okay, that's crazy, but that's another issue. That's not about this. Yes, yes. Um, another few weeks down the line, you might read or hear about um, a trans man or trans woman being assaulted. You, and then my point is that I feel like once there's this understanding, and this can be very triggering for some people, some people are not, are not ready to hear this, but I, I really feel this in my heart. Once we understand that all these things are just shades of the same thing, then I believe we then start saying, oh, I see myself. Mm. I see myself in George Floyd. You know, I see myself in that other person. I see myself in that person, even if you may look completely different from, from that person, because you understand that we are all one. Now, do I believe the system and the powers that be and, and politics and economics acts as, we are, as, as though we are all one? Absolutely not. But knowing that, we can then start making persistent actions of kindness to every single person. So the other thing that's coming up for me to share is there's a beautiful, I think it's by the Dalai Lama who says like, um, if you think that something, you're too small to make a difference, think about the mosquito, you know? So as like 
you guys know because you've been in, in Thailand and anybody, I grew up partly in the tropics, like that tiny little thing in your ear or that tiny little thing causing malaria and fevers, point being, we have such power. Every single one of us has such power. And in the poem, and I, I, say, I, I write this and I say this is like, when was the last time that you were cruel? When was the last time that you were unkind? Because I also believe that monsters, evil is not just, doesn't just, doesn't just come out of our womb. Like now as a mother, I'm like, I really, it is made, it is fashioned by horrible experiences, by unkindness, by injustice. And then all of a sudden we have some victim, some child becoming the oppressor. And nobody asked the question of like, how did that come to be? Totally. And it's a hard question because you want to focus on the victim. You do, there's a part of you that doesn't, I don't want to hear the story of that policeman. But, my, but I think for true healing to happen, we need to understand all, we need to hear all the stories and understand that those stories are interconnected and understand that every time we, act in unkindness, no matter who you look like, no matter how disenfranchised you believe you are, you are wielding power. And that power has a butterfly effect mm -hmm. that can then result in more and more inhumanity. Yes. I love that so much. Thank you. Yeah, I think that the interconnected piece is something that's like for maybe spiritual leaders, leaders that are um, advocating love and advocating unity, that that's something that um, we hear a lot about. We hear about the interconnectedness. We hear about love. We hear about, you know, we're, we're all the same in a sense. And in a spiritual way, that is absolutely true. And then in the societal way, like you said, it's really not true. And those things are a little bit different. And so I think like from what I'm understanding is acknowledging those differences in society, acknowledging that the system doesn't see it the way the spiritual light inside of us sees it and has the ability to see it. And to also keep awareness that that spiritual side is still a truth, a deep yeah. truth. And I, and, 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 you know, from, from just my intuition, that is the healing power in conjunction with the acknowledgement, like, that yeah, that's true. And also in this construct, this is also true. Um, so I mean, you you basically just said that and I'm and I was just reiterating it because to me that's really powerful to see that there's both a separation there and also those two things are really connected, and especially when we're talking about healing, you know, what to really do from here. I love that you said that, Connor. And what's coming up to me to about in me to share is that you know i don't like to put things in a hierarchy but in this case i really i think I, I i feel called to do that which is to say that i believe the truth to be that we are one i believe the truth to be that we are all powerful beings mm -hmm. um and then there is the way the society then operates based on limiting beliefs based on fear based on old ways of doing things um and so as you said, they're both true, but I do believe there's like that kind of absolute truth. And then there's a thing in, in, and then there's like the matrix we have to operate in. Right. But I think what I'm, I'm, I worry sometimes is somebody who has been told, if I, had, if I had listened as a little black girl to all the things that I was told that I could do to how much I could achieve to who I could be with or talk to or what I could bring to the world um, and believe that to be truth because of the societal norms, that would have been a tragedy. And I believe that that still happens. That many people are told based on very different things, based on how they look, that this is the ceiling for you. Mm -hmm. and, they, and they take that as, in as reality. And so one of the things I really want to express is that I don't believe that that is true, even though the government, the man, the system, the matrix can operate that way. That is not your truth. And it's so important that you continue to do whatever, and this is part of self-care, you do whatever you need to do to remind yourself of that absolute truth that you are all loving, all loved, 
all powerful, even when somebody is grinding a knee into your neck, so to speak. To know that that is still that you have you are you are being brutalized, and yet you are a human being that is worthy of love, that deserves to be treated better. Um, it's hard for me to. I feel like I have this thing in my heart and mind to say, and I don't know that I'm being very eloquent about it. I think it's what I'm trying to say is I don't want people to buy into the BS mm -hmm. of their lack of power, even as they acknowledge, even as we must acknowledge that there is a discrepancy of power constructs. Totally. Basically, I just said again, but. No, it's so helpful. And I think for, for people, like, because it's confusing. It, it yeah. can be confusing to be operating in in this matrix in this setup and to also hold on to that truth and you know as people are moving forward and coming forward with like their reaction to the matrix setup and to the structural setup um you know that higher truth is something that can get lost and so it's like paying attention to changes that we can make in the structure and also maybe making those changes with the higher truth up here being our guiding force to make those practical changes, which is maybe protesting petitions, you know, getting someone else into politics, whatever it is. Um, but that that's done from this, from this yeah. higher truth. Yeah. Beautifully said. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, I feel that so much. I've been feeling what you guys are saying. I feel it deeply. And I feel this duality in relationships so much. And everything is a relationship. And so it's like, how do we become our fullest selves while acknowledging the journey along the way? And I've been thinking or feeling a lot, the healing power of being witness to somebody's journey, like really seeing them I think that's something that's being called forth right now in yeah. the world is a desire to be seen and simultaneously and understood to the best of people's ability where they are. And also something around acknowledging that we can't know somebody else's experience fully. And in that, that is okay. That we can, we can love each other. We can know, you shared in the beginning to me that like we were all an other, I think those were used in some way. And to know that and to also know that somebody's experience, we might not be able to fully comprehend or understand, but we can love them there and we can do the best of our ability to understand and love them and just hold space for what they're feeling. And sometimes it is really helpful to tell somebody I can't imagine the depth of what you're feeling. I really can't, I'm not in that position, but I want to be here and I want to love you in it and I want to be witness to your journey. I wanna see how much you've kind of like had to move through in your life, even though I can't fully understand it. I want to be there witnessing you and I also simultaneously wanna hold the fullness of you in my heart mm. as I hold the fullness of all beings and who we truly are. And so much of my, relation, my journey in relationships has been acknowledging that duality. Like, yes, we can be everything, anything. And also here we are evolving in these human bodies at this time in, in the world. And both things are so important to do at once. I love that. I really love that. Because what it brings up for me is this idea of, um, vulnerability and um, and being okay with messy messy conversation messy um, reach outs and I just I use the word messy because I think we can we can we can come with this expectation of ourselves that everything be um, well scripted and be exactly what even as we're talking now, I, I look back to something I said here. I can see, I can hear part of my mind being like, I could have said that in a better way. And it's like just observing that and letting it go. Because I think if you have such fear about, and a lot of people, a lot of us do, such fear about the conversation and the conversation, it's a conversation that needs to be had, it needs to continue having, um, that impedes our healing. Um, and that impedes 
us being able to really just look at that person and really hold space for them. If you're just so much in your, in your mind space and ego and fear, we can't see that person as human, really. Um, that can seem like a strong word, but really. And so um, I just really resonate, Brittany, with what you said. And I, I felt my heart just expand and soften every time somebody reached out to me these past week and was just like, I just want to say I love you um, or how can I be of help? How can I listen? How can I, it's all we really, all, all of us, I think, deeply desire and need. Yes. Yeah, and I, I was just wanting to bring it back to that piece that you talked about in the beginning and the difference between someone reaching out to you and saying, man, how are you? I love you. I'm here for you. Versus, to me, you got to do something about this. Or like, to me, tell me how I should act or whatever it is. And I, and I want to hear, I want, if it's okay, like to talk about that a little bit, because I'm hearing that from a lot of people and I'm seeing that in a lot of posts and a lot of demands that other people do this thing or do that thing. And also that, um, you know, I don't know what the majority of people are in your Instagram following, but if it's a whole bunch of white people messaging you and saying like, I want you to tell me you, something so that I can understand better what's happening or to make clarity make sense. I would imagine that over time, just feeling a little, a little annoying um, or, or something like, I don't have, like you said, it's not my responsibility to educate you on what it means to be black or what it means to be black in this moment or or to for people to turn to you and say, can you direct my hand because you're black? And, I, and I'm curious, you know, like the distinction between those two things. And I don't know if that's exactly what your experience was either, but. That's so great, Connor, thank you. And, um, you know, I think <clears throat> a lot of times when people did reach out to me and I can think of a few very specific people who reached out to me to say, what should I do? Can you make a response on this? And I felt that anger come up. What was very helpful was actually some of those people, I knew them. And I knew that it came from such a place of just despair mm -hmm. and confusion and a respect of me. So I think it's, it's a microcosm of this whole thing we're talking about, which I believe is, again, which can come back to the idea of like, feel the anger. I let myself feel angry and then breathe, that's what I did, and then kind of feel like, what is this really about? What is, what is this person? Who is this person? What are they, what are they, what is this, what's this, what's underneath it all? What is underneath this demand of me? Mm. Um, so I found that what was helpful for me, Connor, was um, letting myself be angry and being okay with that. Being like, that's fine for me to feel anger and feel like a little bit like a, stay back. I've read somewhere a long time ago and it always stuck with me how anger can be a wonderful light bulb towards the need to, to nurture healthy boundaries. So a lot of times we feel angry when actually because we're feeling like, oh, now I have to do something. Just because someone asks you, asks something of you doesn't mean you have to say yes. Mm -hmm. But I think there's already this expectation of myself of they, they're asking me this because I'm already putting on myself that I'm going to have to deliver. You don't, we don't have to do anything. That's the, that, that's for me. And then breathing in and then saying, what's at the heart of this? And I could see that the heart of this again was, I don't know what to do. And you're the person that, you know, is my maybe tether to that, to this community or to this. And I'm, I'm still reaching out to you. There's still, it's still a reach out. At least it's not like a, I'm going to pretend this doesn't exist. Yeah. Um, and so the first, I think my first response was to acknowledge my emotion, to honor it, and then to self-care. And I will be honest, I wrote back a couple of them and I said, right now, I'm taking care of myself. I'm taking care of my mental health. If and when it feels right, I will respond. But that's what I'm doing. And even just that, from a place of love, the anger just melted away. And I had a couple of people write back and be like, oh, please, like, 
please do what you need to do for yourself. Even just what you said is helpful to know that you're okay. So I think, again, it's that thing of um, understanding at the, the heart of a lot of things when people respond or react um, is the confusion, the, the, the fear, the, you know, it's, it's well-intentioned. And then it's up to us in a way that is rooted in self-care, in love, and love includes self-love. Like we can always be like, oh, I, I should, I should, I owe it to my community. Mm -hmm. Most important thing is starting here because that emanates out yeah. is, is then self-care. I don't know if that is. Yeah, I mean, I love that. And that's totally the bulk of messages that I've been receiving and been seeing is people that are really in despair because there's a feeling like I, like my heart is reacting and I don't know what to do with it. I don't know where to put this energy of a desire to make a difference. And I think that that comes up for a lot of people, which is a, a sense of powerless, a powerlessness and a desire to contribute. And then like, well, what do I do with this? What do I do with it? And I think there is a lot of, a, so, uh, some loud voices that are saying, this is what you should do with it. This is what you need to do with it. And if you're not, then you're not part of the solution. And I think that that's like a really sensitive thing to be, to be discussing. Because while I see that there is a drive from, from some folks to go about change in a certain way, I think when we tell other people they have to do it like that, it, yes. it can lose its power. And if someone is just doing it because they're being told to do it, and it's not coming from that heart space, I don't know that ultimately that's the type of change that we're looking for. Hmm. So that's, the, the, that's the kind of like where I'm coming from in terms of the information that I'm getting from folks. A lot of people feeling like I want to make a difference. I want to do something. I want to know, I want the world to know I really care and I'm feeling a lot and I'm hmm. feeling kind of confused and powerless and also feeling a little pressured into doing something that I don't, I don't maybe know enough about or maybe does it resonate with me yeah does that make sense yes and what's two things are coming up to share one is um there are some times where i've had people reach out and i'll just say go to these sites for resources and, and read these resources and whatever resonates with you in terms of voting in terms of petitions like these things i do believe have weight i believe i think many people can, can be very um can say this doesn't even make a difference, but you can at least, I, I can at least, when people reach out, say here's some, here are sites you can go to that will have links and whatever feels good for you, go for it. But in terms of managing or responding to your emotions, if I'm not ready for that, I can't do that right now, but here are some sites that could be, you know, so we can we can do that. That is what, that's an option um, to, be, to offer that practical kind of like thing for people to do. But I also love what you said about um, people feeling shoulded into doing things. Mm -hmm. And um, it's hard, it's a hard one because I feel like that also comes from a good place. Mm -hmm. But if it's not an authentic, if it's not authentically coming from the heart, like what's that but even that might be a judgment right so who am i to say like if you have to fake it till you make it if you have to sort of like maybe just start doing something towards something that you feel like I, that that's that's that must be a good thing i'm i may not be there yet but i want to be why not maybe you haven't had the experience of 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 that or don't you don't know haven't faced or don't think you have have been under the the brunt of brutality or injustice um and so you feel like this disconnection with that and yet you feel like i'm called to do something i say do I, if you do do it love that yeah yeah to be able to experiment with those things and also know i think to be gentle with ourselves in this process especially if you do feel like i don't really know i'm going to try this thing on i'm going to learn more i'm going to try to teach myself and maybe what you taught yourself yesterday, you learned something new the next day and you're like, wow, what I said or what I wanted to do yesterday has really changed. I wanted to do something like this is a process. And it's a, the cool thing about this time is that it's like this huge flower opening up, just saying like, 
here I am, look, you know, look at me, here I am, this is available right now, and everyone is there. And, mm. and it's like this, this newness for a lot of people that, yeah, maybe we knew like, oh, there's some brutality, there's, you know, some, some issues here. Now it's really here for all of us to take, if we want, the opportunity to go to that flower and to really look at that and to look at the depths of it. And we're all going to see something a little bit different, but it's like the energy is here. Mm. And that that process of, of learning and to open up to even approaching something like that can be really different for all of us. And I think the gentleness to allow for the unique process in that is also a really powerful thing while simultaneously there may also be not so gentle parts of us that really want to get something done today right now and in the moment and i think acknowledging that too and having the awareness for that and essentially not just holding space for 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 everyone else but really holding space for those almost contradictory paths within within oneself I don't know if that was very um, yeah. clear, but. That last part you said about like these seemingly, because I think it's seemingly contradictory parts. I actually think that they, um, maybe getting a little bit more on the spiritual realm, but I think everything is connected. And I think that um, I'll just share that, you know, I, I was raised in a kind of Christian upbringing and uh, I, don't, I don't claim to be that. Um, but I, I do look at a lot of different spiritual and sacred texts and the Bible is one that I grew up with. And I think about this verse, I think of a couple of verses that come to me and it's so interesting ha having now read other texts like the Bhagavad Gita or um, uh, Buddhist philosophies and, and readings, how there's so much interconnection and a lot of it is based on this idea of love and kindness and forgiveness. Um, but I also, and I believe you, it's important that we don't skip the steps. I talk about that, like, we can't just pretend our way into, like, all is well and we're all one, like we said in the beginning, right? So it's this idea of, like, really acknowledging all those different parts. And I don't think that they're contradictory. I feel like they're all needed. So one of the things that comes to me from the Bible is that the, a verse I'll paraphrase, which is that, that if, if love, God... Um, Jesus, love, God, I think about love, universe, love, I think is, is what I, is the term I go to, is the body. There are all these different parts of the body, but they're all needed. And so I bring that up to say, like, the anger is needed, the, the hurt is needed, the, the kindness is needed. And so we can also say that in a societal way. Some of us are people who are, we are like swords, but, but we need that knife, we need that. And some of us are more like these like lotus flowers and we need that gentleness, right? Um, so we don't, I don't think that, that, I feel like there can be this idea, and it goes back to what you were saying, Connor, about this idea of like what you should be doing in this situation, what you should be doing in this situation. And it's like, we're all needed and we're all powerful and we can all bring different things to the table in the vein of the body of healing, the body of love. These different parts, these different limbs are so important and not to, um, we're not all legs, you know, and nor should we be. Yeah. That was so beautiful. It's so beautiful. That is, yes, that's exactly what I'm As you guys have been talking about this, I have this feeling too of like, we're, this is such a powerful time. And it's like, I think that we can be, we can be told that like our voice really matters. And I want to, I'm re-feeling that inside of me as our vibe really matters. The energy we're showing up with really matters. And for some people, like you said, that's like the sword. So for some people, it's like crying. For some people, it's being for, it's, it's every different way. And I think like, I truly believe that our organism, our like human organism, that all the beings on the planet, including like every cell on the planet exists in this beautiful harmonious dance when when allowed to and that by us allowing ourselves to have the spaciousness to really feel from within and move from a place of like intuition and inspired being and maybe that 
maybe that involves an action and maybe it doesn't look so much like an action, that is powerful. That is, that's really powerful. Mm -hmm. And I think our society is, is maybe more towards um, doing or like the masculine or the mind in this way that we've, we've maybe equated that action in a certain way with what gets things done. And mm. I think it's a beautiful blending of this harmony of the, the, the active and the passive and passive being more of that, like being receptive, intuitive state. That's just as important as like that action. Just how your, your body, Brittany, as you were saying that what you were doing, your eyes being closed and the loving way you held yourself and the breath as you were talking about that passive, I was like, as I was watching, I was like, nobody, nobody would ever commit an act of violence if they were in that state. Nobody. Nobody. So it doesn't get more powerful than that. We can write laws and we can vote. And I think all that needs to be done and petitions need to be, and we need to take to the streets and we need to rage and we need to do all of that. But if we took the time to breathe, we took the time to pray and pray for our hearts and pray for every being and say, may all beings be at peace. May all beings be happy every single day. If all of us did that, none of this would happen. There would be no space. There would be no space for that because like light and darkness, the light would just infiltrate the darkness, right? It's not about like, how do I cut the darkness? How do I get, it's just light. And it's that simple, but it is that fucking powerful. I love you too, me. I love you so much. I love you, Brittany. I love you, Connor. I'm so grateful for for this that we've created together and that we get to share this with the world. Yeah. I'm so proud of everything you just shared. That was just so gorgeous. And man, that really hit me. Thank you so much. So honored by your words and your influence and your passion and your your poetry and your dance. And you're you're like your dedication, your deep dedication to truth. I thank you too for the work that you continue to do just to the beings that you are, how you bless this world with your love. And I just invite all of us who are here, who are listening, who are watching this, to step into our power as beings of love and find ways every day to try to bring that more to the world. I really believe that that is the path to the healing. As we embrace all the different parts as Connor talks about and teaches so beautifully, as we embrace all of those things, to choose acts of kindness consistently and persistently as a practice every single day, no matter where you are, who you are, Thank you guys so much. Thank you both so much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and I'll just I'll just add that you know we'll put links to to learn more about Tumi, about her practice, Instagram and YouTube, and um, also uh, provide some additional links for those that are looking like we talked about. I want to do something. I'm not sure where to start. We'll provide some of those links as well Beautiful. yeah and and if and as it comes through you i love your i love your poems and your poem dances and yeah i think that whenever if ever you create the poem that you shared with us is so beautiful that or a poem dance we'll link it to this video too mm -hmm. so people can see that Mm -hmm. I just shared it and so there's a poem dance for that poem it's on there it's on my YouTube now so okay. yeah thank you for asking yeah yeah perfect is there anything else that 
either of you want to share before we go? I'm just feeling this calling if it feels good for you all to maybe just like we can all just breathe together and yeah, I love that. awesome. it's perfect. together. Yeah.